Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. We are going to go to part two of Norris's message from last week. And so before we do that, let's pray. God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for everything that you've blessed us with. And thank you for these house churches in our community, God. We just ask that you open our hearts and our ears to be able to hear this message. And we love you so much, Lord. In your name, amen. Say 
are worthy. Oh, Jesus, you are worthy. Oh, Jesus, you are worthy. We pour it training in a lot of these places is how to die. What are you going to do when they come to kill you? And I don't say anything because nobody's trying to kill me. But some of the older men or women will say, here's what I say. You're not killing me. I'm giving my life for you so that you can come to know my Jesus. And here are all these young Arabs and they're shaking their heads going, okay, that's what we'll say. That kind of commitment, that level of commitment. Because they want to see a movement happen across their cities. They're asking the question, the correct question. What's it going to take to reach the city, God? And we don't come in with the strategy. We, we have two basic starting points everywhere we go. That you need to know your identity from Jesus, not from me. Not from a book. We don't bring manuals. We don't bring a bunch of materials because it doesn't replicate. You know, you can come and they'll take your book and it'll sit on a shelf and they'll do nothing with it. We don't use PowerPoint. We don't use anything where they could say, oh, I've got to do, I've got to have something more than what I have in order to go and do this. Here's here's our test. If everybody in the audience can't go and do, what am I training them for? It's more about me and my stuff than it is about them. So everything that's presented has to be able to be done by everyone in the room. That's how things replicate. That's how movements go. We We have to take away the complexity God started a very simple discipleship system. That's what Jesus started, a simple discipleship system. And we thought, ah, God, we can do this better. We're actually going to make it an educational system. And I'm telling you, there's a huge difference between knowledge-based discipleship and obedience-based discipleship. Night and day. I watch men and women who can't read and write. They only learn the scriptures because their grandkids read it to them. They go and do their normal job. And they plant 50, 60 churches a year. Illiterate. They'll never go to Bible college. They'll never read the Bible for themselves. But they know how to obey. They obey what God tells them to do. And when you get around people like that, it, it's a challenge to you. Because we're good at learning. I mean, we're, we, I remember as a boy, and then in college, and sitting with my dad saying, you know what? I don't know how many thousands of sermons I've heard already. And we were just, because I'm a church boy. I go to church. I said, but nobody has ever asked me 
So are you obeying what you learned last week? And next week, I'm going to go hear some really new, great stuff. And again, nobody's, I'm not going to be accountable to obey it. So I can actually feel pretty good about myself. I've attended. I've given some money. And in Western Christianity, I can call myself a, a good church guy. And, the, and Jesus would not let me off the hook. And so I, I, did, I did something one year few years back, I said, I'm not going to learn anything else until I'm obeying all that I know already. Things that God has already taught me. I got to I got to hold myself accountable. Am I obeying what Jesus says to do? So in this, one of the first trainings that we do is how to become a leader of no reputation, because that's what it says. Jesus, he not a bad reputation. He just never cared. Leadership in, is never about a title, about a position, about a role. It's about how are you going to lead wherever God has placed you. So the, so the two things that we want to do is you need to know your identity and you need to know how to hear from God yourself and as a team. So we spend time listening to God. And most of the time they don't believe that's what we're going to do. Because they're not used to that. They're used to someone coming and they're sitting there taking notes. And I say, no, we're, we're actually going to listen to God. And guess what? We're going to do that tonight. For the rest of the time here, we're going to go after a couple of these things just to give you a taste of what this looks like. And if you want to do more of this, I'm available. And I've been praying for this group. I've been praying for Ross and Falaki and not, not knowing you'd been on staff as well, but... You, you have an opportunity here in this place. You can either start a church or you can start a movement. A movement that can't be contained in this building. And it's, it's two different things. It's two different strategies. And you gotta, we have to be in a place where we're hearing from God. Because he's the one that, he's never, here's what God never does. Man, I don't know what to do about that. He never has that response. He's never scratching his head confused. He always knows what to do and always knows what to say. We're the ones that think we know better and we stop listening to him. So strategy and tactics, all of that stuff, it all happens in God's presence. What does he want us to know? And we will not know the full mind of Christ until everybody's operating in their identity. That's how good teams that are, that we're, that's how they function in these places. Nobody's competing because they know who they are. Nobody said, oh, I've got to become, i got to become like Josh or i got to become like Falake. No, you don't. We already have a Falake. We have a Josh. You get to be you. And without you listening to God the way he's designed you, we're missing some part of the mind of Christ. He doesn't tell everything to Falake or or Josh or Ross. He doesn't. Nobody gets to have the full mind of God. That's why it's called the body of Christ. And we've got to listen to one another. So the enemy lies to us two ways all our life. He lies to us through the curses of men and through the praises of men. Okay? He lies to us. And you grow up. Believing these lies and they become a way that you operate. I'm not smart enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not handsome. I'm not athletic enough. I'm a failure. I've always been a failure. It's up to me and I'm not going to be able to do it. And all of us have it. We all have it somewhere. Well, I, I'm, a, I'm not going to be a good father. My, my kids are having trouble. I must be a horrible parent. These lies take root in our life. So here's a question, and I, and, and I would love for you to either on your phone or on a piece of paper. I know some of you have done this before, but I want you to write down, I want you to write down every lie you've ever believed about yourself that comes to your mind. What does he say? Search, search me, O oh God, and see if there's any wicked way in me. And the problem with us is most of the time we think, I just got to lay out my long list of sins to God. And I think that's not, that's not what God's asking us to do there. Search and see if there's a wicked way in me. 
And I believe one of the wicked ways is the way the enemy's been lying to you your whole life. And you've begun to believe these things. Things that were said to you as a child. I wish you'd never been born. Can't you be more like your brother? Curses. Curses that get put on us. I have a friend who's Lebanese who can see angels and demons like he can see you and me. And he was, say, he was watching the demon, demonic world move in response to his angry words towards his son. He was watching them because they understand authority better than we do. And when you have authority over somebody, you have the ability. And the scripture says that you, with this tongue, you can curse and you can bless. And we've been cursed. You've all been cursed with some lie that you believe. And I want you just to write it down. Whatever it might be. Any negative thing you've ever believed about yourself. Some of you, it may have been something that was done to you. And what I'm introducing to you here is something that you, you need to be doing on a regular basis. I ask this, I ask this every day. What lie am I believing about myself today, God? Search my heart. Is there a wicked way in me? And the other way that the enemy lies to us is through the praises of men. And these are things that we kind of like. We get paid for them. We get praised for them. It's not that they're bad. They're just not an identity. A job is not an identity. Being a missionary is not an identity. It's just something that I do. And again... I go back to, to my dad when I was a boy. He said, your, your identity is not football player. Your identity is not athlete. You bring your identity, whether you're cleaning the toilet or you're scoring touchdowns. None of those things define you. So an identity is not a role. It's not a job. Right? It's not an award. It's not an identity. But we make them an identity. And a lot of people have a harder time getting rid of the praises of men than they do the curses of men because we like it. And, and that's why you, you got to be honest with God. I like this. And God likes it too. It's just not an identity. So the curses of men and the praises of men, the lies that you've ever believed about yourself. Now, I was on the phone. I was on, I'm telling you, I, I do this all the time. I was just on a Zoom call with 30 Pakistanis two days ago, walking them through this same thing. The enemy is not that clever. He's using the same tactics all over the world. And the same truth is this. None of you have ever been separated from the love of God your whole life. We, and I was trained in it. We used to tell people, there's this great chasm. God's on one side and you're on the other. It's not even the truth. We've never been separated from God. He loves us. He loved us while we were still his enemies.
And we perpetuate this lie. It's not true. And I had to stop telling it because I was trained in that. It's not true. Nobody's ever separated from God. Ever. So right now, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. And I want you to imagine, because your imagination is from God. It's not evil. Right? And I want you to picture Jesus right there with you, sitting next to you, standing in front of you, behind you, wherever he is. I want you to see him. And I want you to visualize him right there, because he is. He's right there with you. He's always been with you. Spirit, I want you to give this list you made. You just made it. And I want you to give it to him. I want you to just hand it over to Jesus and see what he does with that list. So somebody, what did Jesus do with that list when you gave it to him? What did he do with it, Josh? Put it in the fire. What did he do? <laughs> Crumbled it, turned to ash, and it blew away. What did he do? <laughs> yeah. Right. Delete, delete, delete. Right? I've done this. God doesn't ever think about you like that. He's never once thought you were a failure. He's never had, and, and those are the things that when we give them to him and they just burn up. I've had people say, he ate it. He ate the list. This, what did you see? Yeah, see? <laughs> see? Yeah. Jesus doesn't think about us this way. That's always the enemy who's telling you these things. So people say, well, how do you hear God's voice? Because he, he will never accuse you. The accuser of the brethren is not Jesus. He doesn't do that. He doesn't talk this way. So now I want you to, uh, we're going to have you close your eyes here in a second. There's, God has a name for you. And if you, if you need examples, there's tons of them throughout Scripture. When Gideon heard, what did he call him when he was hiding? What did he call him? The mighty man of God and Gideon's going, what? Yeah, I'm hiding. And if you, look, if you read the story again, Jesus never addresses the false identity. He doesn't even speak to it. He only spoke to him as the mighty man of God, the mighty man of valor. That's how he spoke to him, because that was his identity. That's who he was. Okay? I have some identities that God's given me. And one of them is, I'm a chain breaker. That's what he called. And I break chains off of lies off of people. So it's in, and, you know, it's the way I kick the enemy's ass, to be honest with you. I'm sick of him winning. I'm sick of him stealing people's identity. I want people to know the truth that sets them free. From all the lies. And it's not just the truth of Scripture, it's the truth of God's voice to you. So I'm going to have you close your eyes and I'm going to ask Jesus to tell you something and I want you to write it down and I don't want you to filter it. I don't want you to wonder, oh, I, I that. So, Jesus, right now, every man and woman here, they have laid their list before you and you've taken it. 
Would you tell them what you think about them right now? Just tell them. The first thing that comes to your mind, just write it down. What that's Jesus telling you, what he thinks about you, the names he's calling you. What's he saying to you? What did he call you? What did he call you? <laughs> My faithful bride. Amen. What did he call you? What name did you hear? Yeah. Worthy. Wow. Probably exact opposite of the lies you were believing, that you were unworthy. Huh? Yeah. Jesus tells us the truth. He'll never lie to you. What were some of the other names you heard from Jesus? These, this is really important. You need to know this. You need to know who you are in the room. What name did he call you? Warrior. <laughs> yeah. We need a bunch of them. Pillar of fire. <laughs> wow. Woo! <laughs> I love it. You need to write these things down and you need to, this is what Jesus says about you. And it's the truth that sets you free from the lie every day. Many times a day because the enemy is going to come at you to try to convince you that you're unworthy. Or that you don't shine or that you, you can't fight. I have, one of the first names that Jesus called me was that I'm a field general. And I've never, I don't have any role in my organization, thank God. I, I don't have to, because I get to be the field general everywhere I go. To my family, I get to be a chain breaker. And another name that I, I sometimes when I'm hanging out with Jesus, he puts me on his back, and I, I, it's, it, I can do it. You know when all the dwarves fell out of the tree? In Lord of the Rings, and they got, you know, they're in the feathers of the eagles. Remember that? That's what it's like. And Jesus puts me on his back, and we just fly around. And he shows me stuff. And he shows me people. These are, this is my identity, and I, and I don't have to impress anybody. I just get to be me. I know who I am. And, and now you know who you are, who you really are. And, and I'm telling you, that's the truth that will set you free. When you learn to hear the voice of God yourself in the moment, and it's possible in every moment. During... The last couple months, we were just spending time, you know, thinking about Jesus and then thinking about Peter and Luke when, it, when he was the, the rooster crowed for the third time, or the rooster crowed after his third denial. And it says, and Jesus looked at him. So I was asking Jesus, I said, so what was the look? I said, you know, you were getting hammered, beaten, mocked, getting your beard pulled, but you looked at Peter. What was the look? And he said, I was, this gets, I can't even talk about it. He said, I just wanted him to know how much I loved him in the midst of what he thought was his worst failure. So I've been sitting with Jesus in my memories of my worst failures. I'm looking at his eyes. And he's looking at me with love every time. It's the enemy that's telling me I'm no good. That I'm a failure. Not when I look at Jesus, though. He's always looking at me with love. 
and it's bringing healing to me. And that's how Jesus is healing people around the world because 99.9% of people will never get to go to a counselor. You realize that? They'll never read a book about, you know, PTSD or therapy. They'll never get it. It's not available where they live. But shouldn't the healing, isn't everything or all of Jesus available to all sheep? Don't all sheep get the privilege to hear his voice, to see his eyes? And instead we've locked it away with the big sheep? You say, no, only the big sheep get to hear his voice. That's a lie. Every little sheep like us, every ordinary man and woman gets all of Jesus. He didn't get more of himself to some people. He gives all of himself to every person. And that's how we're empowering ordinary men and women to change their cities. Not coming in with the, our great manual. That's all about us. I love the God plus nothing, Jesus plus nothing. Because there's that's all we need. He's available for all of those people, big or small. So this little thing that you did, you can do this with anybody. Sit with Jesus. I've done it with my grandkids. My grandkids, who once they hit five years old or where they're kind of coherent, we sit with Jesus. And I got one little grandson, and he was he's just like I was when he was... I mean, I can throw him across the room and he's up and right back at it, you know, and he leads with his head. I mean, he just comes at me. And so we're he knows I'm up early. So he crawls into my lap one morning and when he was staying the night. And we were just talking to Jesus. I said, so Jesus Clayton, what, what name does Jesus call you? And he looks up and he goes, he's, he says I'm a wrestling nut. <laughs> and I go, you are. And he loves that about you. He made you like that. I said, what else? And he looks up and he goes, he said I carry his heart. And he's the most tender of all the grandkids. You know, he's, all, he's other-centered little boy, which is unusual, as you know. They're mostly self-centered. He's an other-centered little boy. And I said, you carry his heart. That's right. And that's what I call him. How are you carrying God's heart today, Clayton? How are you loving? This is not hard. Anyone can do it. And it's the beginning of helping people learn their identity, and hearing from God. So let me just pray for you. Yeah, Holy Spirit, would you seal up what Jesus spoke to each one tonight? I bless you, each one of you, in this identity that Jesus called you. This is what he said to you. This is the truth that will set you free from all the lies. And I would just bless you to be able to spend time with Jesus, asking him these same questions every day. What lies am I believing about myself? And then listen to what Jesus is saying to you. I bless you to hear his voice for yourself. He loves you so much. He sees you. He hears you. He hears every time you're afraid. He sees you. When you're anxious, when you're weeping in your bed, when you're lonely, He sees you. He hears you. He knows you. He cares about you. He loves you. He's not mad at you. He's never been mad at you. Jesus is wanting you to know He's never been mad at you. He's not disappointed in you. Those are all lies. 
He loves you. He loves you tenderly. And he wants you to hear that from him. He wants you to be overwhelmed by his love, his goodness, his mercy, his forgiveness. So I bless you with these things tonight. I bless you with freedom in the truth that sets you free. In Jesus' name, amen.